Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a quick look at the pipeline for importing your character creator character into Unity using HDRP mode, otherwise known as High Definition Render Pipeline. Okay, so this makes your character look a lot better in Unity, and with Character Creator 3.03 .03, we have that ability to do so. Alright, so uh, make sure of course that you're updated to uh, Character Creator 3.03, .03. okay? And also before you export, make sure that none of your meshes have, uh, you know, naming conflicts. So your warrior underwear, for example, the material is called warrior underwear. Uh, you don't want it to be the same as this material name on a separate mesh. Okay. Otherwise you're going to have some material issues. All right. So let's go ahead and just go ahead and export our character to FBX format. So we're going to go to file and export and FBX. Okay. We're going to choose the Unity 3D preset here, of course. All right. And we do not want to embed the textures. We do want to include some motions. Okay. And I've already added them here, the T pose and a huntress motion here. To add them, you can just go to uh, this button right here and just throw them in one by one. Make sure that your zero uh, underscore T pose is the number one item in the list, as always, okay? And then you want to make sure you delete hidden mesh. And from that point on, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and just export this and press OK. And we're just going to export to my desktop. Uh, we'll create a new folder on the desktop. We'll call it uh, Queen, all right? And go into that folder. It's always good to export into a separate folder uh, when you're doing this. Uh, okay, so let's just call the FBX Queen as well and save that out. And that'll just take a second to uh, export. Okay, and once that's done exporting, let's go to our desktop and take a look at our Queen folder, which is uh, right here. Okay, and if we go into there, we can see we have the uh, Queen.fbm. And in the Textures folder, let's go into here, for example, and let's take a look at something like the uh, the skin or the cloak here for example so the cloak if you go into the folders here you'll find it has an hdrp uh, texture map okay uh, i'll go into something else maybe like the uh, queen herself and the base for her body and maybe her uh, body here you can see there's an hdrp map as well okay so this is a uh, when you export with character creator 3.03 .03 and you use the unity 3d preset it's always going to export one of these hdrp maps along with it okay so let's go ahead and close that down and what we're going to do is we're going to load up Unity uh, here. And keep in mind, we're using 2018.3.0 uh, F2 right now. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and load this up. Now, it's recommended generally that you use 2018.2.20 F1 or higher, okay, to do this. I'm just going to use this uh, version right now uh, since it should work just fine. Okay, let's create a new project here. And when you create a new project, let's just call it uh, HDRP Demo. And you want to choose the template. You want to make sure your template is high definition uh, RP. Okay, render pipeline just like that. And save it to whatever folder you want. And just go ahead and create a project. And then we'll come back in a minute when that's finished. All right, so once your Unity project loads up here, this is what you'll have. We'll just go ahead and uh, delete all the example assets since we don't really need those in our scene right here. And just leave us with the, uh, with the regular stuff. So the next item of business here is we need to import in the scripts uh, that I talked about earlier, okay? And this script can be downloaded in the description of this video. There's a link that we'll provide for you guys. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is go to this folder. So you're gonna have this uh, zip file called CC uh, Character Auto Settings Unity. Okay, and when you unzip it, you're gonna have three different scripts. Uh, depending on what sort of import you want, there's a PBR import, the one we already uh, talked about in a previous version or in the previous tutorial here. Uh, there's also lightweight uh, render pipeline, okay, and heavy or heavy <laughs> heavyweight uh, high definition render pipeline, okay. So what you want to do is you want to import this in this asset into your uh, uh, browser here into your assets. So to do that, you can just right click and select import package and custom package. Obviously, you want to unzip it first, okay, and we're going to import in HDRP beta, uh, beta 1.1 and go ahead and open that, okay. And it's going to create an editor folder. It's going to create a CC assets folder. And the editor folder contains the script, and you want to import your character into the CC assets folder. Okay, so let's go import. Okay, basically the same process that we went through in the previous uh, couple tutorials here. Okay, so there you go. There's our uh, editor and CC assets folder. So what you want to do is you want to bring your character. If you click on this README file here, it says put all your character FBX files into this folder, please. Very polite. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, here's our Queen folder. I'm going to click and drag this directly into the assets folder. There we go. And it's going to import that character along with all of her materials and everything. And it's all going to be set up automatically. So this is, just, you know, super fast, super easy process. You really don't have to do anything. Just a little bit of tweaks at the end, which I'll show you in just a moment. All right. So then what we'll have is we'll have our queen folder here and the CC assets. And under that, we'll have our uh, 
uh, animator controller right here. You can see we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Let's close it for now. And you can see we have the uh, textures, FBM, and we have a prefab, all right? This is the queen prefab that's been put together by the script, all right? So we'll go ahead and just import that into our uh, scene right here. Click and drag it, and we'll press the F key, kind of focus on it a little bit. And you can see the uh, beautiful uh, queen character in all her glory, okay? Uh, pay particular attention to the nice uh, shine we get off the uh, shoulder armor there, okay? And the, uh, and the chest uh, piece right here as well. So we get some nice, you know, high resolution, uh, reflections off of all of these items here. You can see the character really looks spectacular. Um, in particular, again, the metallic parts um, are doing much better. Now, if we want to take a look at this uh, shoulder armor here, for example, let's just click on it. Uh, shoulder armor over here. Let's take a look at the uh, shader here. So the shader is set to HD render pipeline uh, slash lit. Okay, let's go into that a little bit here and you can see we have the mask map, all right? So the mask map is that HDRP image that our map that was uh, exported with our character in FBX format. If we double click it, you can see right here, it's pretty uh, pretty spaced out there. Uh, but you can see the difference if we select normal map space from tangent space and we change that to like object space. Okay, this is gonna be the difference. This is what the uh, HDRP map, the big difference it's making in the uh, you know the visual of our character of the, uh, of the uh, shoulder armor there. Okay, and in addition to that, let's take a look at the skin, all right? So just to zoom back a little bit here. Let me just go to the side here a little bit so it's better lighting on our skin. And, uh, whoa, we're in the head. All right, so if we take a look at the skin here, let's uh, select our character, just go to base body here, and go to the skin on the head, for example, down here. If we go up here to surface options, you can see that we have uh, surface type set to opaque and material type set to subsurface scattering, okay? If we change that to like standard, you'll notice a big difference right there, okay? Doesn't really look as good, it looks a little bit, uh, you know, chalky, I guess, on the skin. However, if we change that back to subsurface scattering, you can see it's much softer and much more natural looking. In addition to that, uh, down, by, uh, down on your character's face uh, uh, diffusion profile here as well, you'll see it's set to skin. We change that to like foliage or something. You can see it doesn't really look as good. It looks a little bit washed out there. So obviously you want to keep that at skin to get everything looking nice and uh, higher contrast on a character's skin. One other thing that this script does uh, for us is if we go down to our character skirt here, you can see if we select the skirt, let's just select it right here. You can see if we go into the shader here that we have the option for to change our surface type from opaque to transparent if we do so. You'll see that we get a bit more transparency in our uh, in our skirt there. We can move it around. We can kind of see the character's legs underneath. Uh, not very well, but uh, kind of. And so what we want to do here is if we want to make those holes larger and, and more noticeable, what we can do is select Alpha Cutoff Enabled. Okay, when we do that, you can see we get uh, you know, a bit of a better look uh, underneath the skirt. We can kind of see a little bit better through it. We can adjust the level of Alpha Cutoff, and you can see how that uh, results. That results in here, okay? If you want to make it, you know, the holes more defined and larger and sharper, we can increase that alpha cutoff to like a value like this. Let's click out here. You can kind of see there that uh, we can, oops, you can see a lot better uh, now just like this. Uh, you can see through uh, to those legs underneath. Okay, so it really depends on the look you're going for. You can just uh, adjust uh, to whatever you want there and uh, go from there. Okay, now when it comes to our character's hair, you may have noticed there's kind of an issue, uh, a little bit of transparency issue, kind of a uh, little... Uh, blank spaces in between her hair right there and the way you can fix that is to go into your character's hair settings okay so you can go into uh, the hair under the uh, prefab here and under hair you'll find uh, you know the different sections of the hair here top and bangs and wisps and whatnot and just go into the uh, we'll go to the top uh, for example you can see this one little blank area right here at the very top uh, what we're gonna do is just kind of go down here and there's a section, uh, or a couple of parameters rather, one's labeled enable transparent depth, po uh, depth post pass and the other one is pre pass you can see right here now if we uh, select pre pass let's just kind of zoom in a little bit here if we select uh, pre pass you can see that it'll kind of just uh, you know make up for all that uh, missing space right there okay so obviously we want to have this uh, pre pass on in, in most cases uh, or is it here I would miss it uh, pre pass there we go and then you can uh, adjust the alpha cutoff as well okay like this and uh, you know, adjust it to whatever uh, value you think uh, works the best. Okay, we can do the same thing for like uh, the bangs. I don't think the bangs really need much of a much of an effect there, but we can go ahead and give it a shot anyways. Okay, you can see the difference, the uh, pretty strong difference there on the bangs there as well. Okay, so 
Um, obviously, uh, enable transparent depth prepass is something you want to consider uh, having. Uh, again, it really depends on your character's hair and their particular situation there. Okay, and uh, there's the uh, wisps. Not sure much of, how much of an effect they're making. You can see kind of a little bit right there. Okay, and you don't want to make it uh, obviously, you know, too transparent, but uh, I think that's looking just fine and dandy there. Okay, we can go into like base and skull cap like that as well. Uh, just one more here. Uh, there we go. Depth pre pass on the base. And let's see what that does if we. Not much of an effect. Okay, so again, you know, you don't always need to have it, but again, it depends on each individual situation. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, make this a little bit smaller there. And we can give our uh, project a playback, and she should pop into the uh, animation pose uh, that she, we imported her in with. If we go into, let's go into the scene here and. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Looking fine and dandy in all her uh, HDR. Let's click off of her so the orange selection box is not there. All right? Not bad. Not bad at all. So let's take a look now at the lightweight rendering pipeline. So in the lightweight render pipeline, basically you just go to project settings here. And if you go down to graphics, you can adjust the, uh, um, the pipeline settings from uh, HDRP to... Uh, uh, LWRP, okay, and you can see here the quite a significant difference in the quality of the render. Uh, not quite at the level of the HDRP, um, but still, you know, fairly decent and really depends on the resources of your game and uh, the look you're going for. So if we play this one back here, you'll see that uh, basically the same process. All you got to do is go up to, there into the project settings, or into the settings rather, and uh, adjust the uh, settings from HDRP to LWRP. All right, so that's about all I wanted to cover in this tutorial, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for watching our fourth uh, Unity tutorial of this series. And uh, hopefully you've uh, had a chance to catch all the other, the first three. And if you have any other questions, feel free to go to our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.